Hello everyone, Excedra here bringing you episode 18 of Ipovolemia, a mud pack by Kathleen. So, like I said I would do, for once, I've moved my uh, witchery setup right here. So I have the altar right here, got my witch's oven and my witch's cauldron and my distillery. And I moved some chests here because since I'm actively working on this stuff, instead of throwing it in the ME system, kind of want to keep them here for now-ish. That being said, um, look, where are all the chest guns? In the time lapse, I did a second ME drive. This is the fluid ME drive, and this is the ME drive drive, which now contains one, two, three, four, five, six, seven extra ME storage cell. So we should be good for a while now. I threw, threw a lot in there. Same thing, since we're actively working on Tomcraft, kept all of the Tomcraft there the same way I kept all the Botania st stuff there. I still have to get rid of these seeds, but I, I just, guys, give me an episode or two just to accept the fact that I'm going to be throwing away the 111 seeds. And maybe I'll get over my distrust of getting rid of things. We finally got our water artichoke and it's maturing. And we're also uh, maturing the mandrake. I'm just going to do a quick search on mandrake. So with mandrake seed and snowbell, so once the mandrake are 10, 10, 10, we're going to make the wolf's bane at 5, 5, 5. And if I look at the snowbell, uh, yeah, the garlic. So once the wolf bane are 10, 10, 10, I'll also do the garlic. It, there's a possibility that I just create both at the same time. So I can grow them both at the same time. And I think that will be all of the witchery seeds. I've also started the uh, nether seeds and the um, hemp seed, which means I no longer have a single 111 seed. And by the way, yeah, downstairs here, I moved the ch two chests and in one chest, I put all of my 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 seeds. And in the other chest, I put all the thing that I can enchant or doesn't know that I can disenchant to get enchantment. And since this has a max reach of 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I started adding a row down here for all of the new resources that we're creating. Ooh, stone, yes please. So, oh, that was so dumb. I completely forgot that I've been creating a shit ton of stones here, but uh, whatever. So let's move back here and let's look at this. Why isn't this working? I feel like there's an issue. Oh, yeah, there is an issue. It's yeah, now it should start working again. Okay, perfect. And here, oof, I, I'm starting to have way more stone than I actually have time to craft stuff. Anyway, back, well, not back, starting this episode. Oh, no, there's something else that we did. Right here, uh, I added all of these drawers. So I also put in a rubber sapling, which has reproduced to three more sapling, and I'm starting to get raw rubber the natural way, not the essence way. And what I do once in a while is I come click on these different saplings, grab a couple, and I come in the middle right here. Oops. Give me, give me, give me. I come in the middle right here and I just refill these things with whatever saplings I have available. And I like having two stacks of everything if possible, like this. I have two stacks of the Rowan, two stacks of the Hawthorn, two stacks of the Elder. So these are reproducing super well. Uh, still not a two stacks of Birch, but you know, it's getting there. And let's put that right here. And that's it for now. So this is working really well, it's well started, and I can leave it alone. Oh, by the way, one of the things that I'm going to do in the time lapse or next episode, I'm going to move my ME system. And what I want to do is, I think I want to put my ME system wireless exit right here, because right here, I think it's going to reach to my mob farm, all of the witchery, the Batania, the Tomcraft, like, I think it's going to make things easier to reach. And I also, I don't know if I did that on time lapse or in the episode, I now have an ender tank for water. So whenever I need water somewhere, which I'm going to need for this episode, I'm gonna come back right here and we're gonna make another ender tank. Ender tank. 
right here. Yeah, it's going to help if I make a cauldron, cauldron in here and ender tank, like so. I'm going to need some lapis. Uh, well, let's hope I have some downstairs. Basement uh, lapis, yeah. Let's grab this. You know what? Uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I'll be good because if I remember correctly, multiples of nines. Yes, perfect. So now I can put this down and I can go, you, sir, are becoming water. Perfect. And put that in here. Stop that. And now I can break this and go right back here to Britannia. So the reason I want to do this is that I can now put it beside right here and it's going to help when I'm making flowers because guess what? Today we're continuing Britannia and today we're going to need flowers. You know what? I'm just going to make a little bit of inventory space. Nope, nope, nope. Don't need the book. Gonna keep the wireless terminal. I'm gonna keep the thermometer because we're going to be making new stuff and the new stuff I'm gonna to want to analyze. And no need of this. Perfect, so now we're ready for botanic. What I'd like to do is I'd like to start gearing up for the Gaia fight because the Gaia fight is going to start giving us uh, yellow hearts and going to start giving us uh, Gaia ingots, well, no, Gaia spirits, so we can move on to the next step. But before the Gaia fight, well, two things. I want to make a Gaia arena. Uh, the Gaia was something that I had a really hard time defeating in my last playthrough of, I don't remember what the series was, but it was a very hard mob. And since then, I've done some research and I found a video by Mice of Man or Mice of, what's his name? Mice of Mischief, Mischief of Mice. And I'll post it not in the video now, but in the video where we get the arena. And I'll show you the arena to build, but for that, we're gonna need a little bit more of Batania. But before we do that, two more things. So, this tree finally grew, and it looks like a normal tree, but I'm gonna switch to my thermometer, and you guys are gonna notice something different. Oh, what this little yellow ball in there? Yeah, these trees, which I don't think I've scanned, yeah, I scanned it in my time lapse. These trees, they create nodes. So yeah, that's how we can get more nodes. So completely back there, I'm probably going to po uh, to uh, plant a, oh, it broke through the dirt to go down here, which I'm guessing it did all around, yeah, okay. So back there, I'm probably going to put a couple just to try and get more nodes, although I already have 10 nodes, but I can always get more nodes. That's never like a big problem. Okay. So today, we're going to push into Batania a little bit. Yeah, of course, that doesn't work. Ooh. Nope. Are there things that I've forgotten to scan that I could? Nope. 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 Can I scan this thing? Meh. Meh distributor? Nope. Okay, so nothing else. Perfect. So what was I talking about? Okay, first thing first. The way, so the mana spreader. There are three levels of mana spreader. Standard mana spreader. Goodbye. Then there's the elven mana spreader, which has a faster rate of, okay, sorry. One of the reasons that we put things close together, well, first of all, the mana spreader needs to be, <coughs> sorry, touching a mana pool to be able to transmit the mana to the spreader. And the spreader, can transmit, a normal spreader can transmit 12 block before you start losing mana. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it could send up to here before we start losing mana. If you have an elven mana spreader, you'll go to 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, right here. And if you have a Gaia one, it's 48. So down there before you have some loss. Also, an Elven Mana Spreader has a higher rate of transfer. So let me show you something quickly. If I come back here and, ooh, no. I've already done this whole chest, have I? Yeah, but Tanya is not very friendly with this thing. Anyway, so as I was saying, um, if I look, oh, I need my wand. Where's my wand? Right here. So. 
if you look at this, it's full. It's kind of normal that it's full. It's because all of these mana pool are full. But let me just... Okay, let's get started. So this is going to be a good way to get started. So click here to show quest. Uh, we're going to go to Batania right here. And we're going to get into Sparks because that's now unlocked. So I'm guessing that Spark, if I'm looking at the line, was waiting for us to complete the portal stuff. So for the Sparks, we need to make a Augment Dispersive, an Augment Dominant, an Augment Recessive, an Augment Isolated, and by the way, they all take a different rune. So you basically, you saw one of each of the basic rune, and we can make a Spark Tinkerer. Not quite sure about this one yet, but let's make all of those to do the quest. So we're going to need three of these. We're going to need two. Oh, let's grab these. We're going to need two, four pixie dust. One, two, three, four. Oh, four. I said four, man. Four. And we're going to need some dream wood. Well, that's for the next step. But anyway, I'm going to need some dream wood. And then in here, I'm going to need one, 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 one. And what were the other things for the spark? Man of Steel. Oh, I already have four. Perfect. So we need to make four. We have four and four, and we have these, and we have the three half here, and we need, uh, what's the other thing that we need? We need a redstone. So let's grab this wireless terminal and grab a redstone. Redstone right here. And uh, what's the other thing? Oh, the two elementium. I still need two elementium right here. So let's craft the spark and spark and sparky thing. So like this and like this. And so the spark, this this spark thingy, the spark tinker, if I remember correctly how it works, you put it next to a spark. So let's say here or there. And then you put the augment on the tinker instead of on the spark. And then with a, man, uh, with a redstone signal, you can be a normal spark or be an augmented spark. Now I'm gonna use that. I'm just going to make the sparks right now. I want to show you the magic of sparks. So it's going to be pixie dust and mana steel, and then it's going to be one spark augment, two spark augment, three spark augment, and four spark augment. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to keep the spark augment the way I'm going to set them up, but I want to show you something first. So let me grab some living rock right here and make another mana pool. And the other mana pool. I'm going to put right here, let's say, okay? Now, on this mana pool, I'm gonna put a spark. And as you can see, all of these have mana. This one doesn't, and the spark are not transferring. But if I take a spark, I'm gonna take a spark augment isolated, and I'm gonna put it on this one, okay? So isolated, I've just told the system, Never pull from this spark. Don't pull from this because this is my uh, this is my alchemy catalyst pool. I need to have it full all the time. And here I have a spark and two more spark. And now you have choices. You can say recessive, dispersive, or dominant. So recessive is I'm just searching my note. Re recessive is for why can't I find my note when I want my notes? Wow, I look like a very organized person. Okay, so recessive will push to any other sources that are dispersive or unaugmented. But dispersive is going to push to everything that it can. The unaugmented or the... Uh, no, sorry. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm mistaking things now. I'm making a big mistake. Let me do something else. I completely forgot about that one, which is great. So I'm going to grab this mana tablet and I'm going to make another mana pool. Like so. And this mana pool, I'm going to put right here. I'm also going to put a spark on this one. Spark. Where are the spark? Another spark on this one. So this one, I'm going to put a discursive on it. Then this one, I'm going to put a dominant. Okay? So because this one is dominant, look. It's starting pulling, but it's not pulling from this one. It's pulling from only these two. And the reason it's only pulling from these two is that it's only pulling from uh, unaugmented 
or uh, unaugmented or dispersive, uh, not dispersive or recessive. Okay, so these are going to empty half each and filling this one completely. Amazing. This one is still empty. Now, let's say that I want this one to fill at some point. I can't, it's already has something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you, look at my mana tablet or do I have another? No. So look at my mana tablet right here. Do you see how there's a little spot left? I'm going to put a dispersive, sorry, a recessive augment on this one. And because this is recessive, it's going to give mana to this one, which is unaugmented. And this one, which is, um, what's it called? which is uh, dispersive. And you might have noticed this is now full. The reason for that is that the dispersive is a wireless charging system for player. So once a player is within six block, I think, it starts recharging their mana tablet. So let's say that I'm using this right here and I'm going away and I'm putting blocks down and it's using up my mana tablet. The moment I walk by this again, it's going to refill my mana tablet. So this is really, honestly, this is really useful. So this is kind of a way that you have like a, you can have a big mana pool set up because technically I could have another mana pool right here and I could have it with a, um, a what's it called? A mana spreader pushing to this one and this one and on this one I could have a dominant spark. So from there where I'm generating my mana, it would automatically transport here and then it would keep these two full. So you can have as many dominant as you want and they just split the load between each other to grab mana as it's available. So that's done, which now brings me to showing you this. If you're looking at this mana spreader, it's, oh, it's doing a good job of keeping up because we're not generating so much mana, yeah. So one of the things that we could have done is that if we were, like this terminal is not active, there's many things not generating mana, so it's keeping up. But what I could do is I could change it for a different mana spreader. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create an elven mana spreader. And for an elven mana spreader, you need this, this, and let's grab a petal. Yeah, I knew I heard a stupid mob die. Okay, let me get rid of this and push these in here. So the elven mana spreader, which is crafted like so. Dreamwood, this, and a mystical blue. Now I can put the Elven Mana Spreader right here and then I can bind this to right here. The reason you might want to do this is that this Mana Spreader is now going to work much faster. So once we start crafting runes, the runes that we're crafting are going to be crafted much faster. Well, that's another quest with 16 more sparks. Let's show that in here. And if, and if we come back here, we're ready for the next step. So for the next steps, I want to get into flowers because for the Gaia fights, there are some flowers that are very useful. Some of these flowers though are hard craft that requires like rings of spring, uh, rings, runes of spring, autumn, winter, and, uh, and uh, summer. Wow, that was complicated. So I'm gonna get some of those started. So we're going to start with the summer rune. For the summer rune, we're going to need an air and an earth. So not water, an air and an earth. And those are not going to get consumed. Okay, that's the beauty of when you're making things in the runic altars, they don't get consumed. When you make them in the petal apothecary, they do get consumed though. So you have to be careful what you use where. So we're going to need, let me just search runes. And I'm going to show you the recipe. We're going to start with rune of summer. Uh, yeah, Rune of Summer, and I'm going to need two cents per craft, a melon and a slime ball. So I'm going to, I want to make four craft of each because we're going to be spending some. So sand, oh, sand, I'm going to grab eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Slimes I don't have really in my system, but I have here, one, two, three, four, and the slime, we're going to grab nine stack so that we can, oh, do I even have, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Come here and this should make me some slime. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm never going to need to craft more slime again. One, two, three, four, and let's get started. 
which brings me to another issue. Give, give me a second. I'm going to have to start making more living rock. And you know what? I have some easy stone right here. I'll just grab that. Because every rune, everything you make on the runic altar needs at least one rock. So let's put rocks all around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. By the way, it's the Menacier monocle that lets me see the area of effect of things. Okay, so Rune of Earth, Rune of Air, one melon, one slime ball, two sand, and I need some living rock. And look at the speed of this. It's like super slow. What? Okay, it's finally started. Yo, boy, will you please work? What's going on here? Is it because of the spark? Hey, I was sold a bill of lies. This this is super supposed to be super much faster arrest. I don't understand what's going on. I'm going to have to do some research in the meantime. Let me just put this on here and double it up. Yeah, this one's not sending. It, if it's because of the spark, I'm going to be pissed because my what I read on the internet, and yeah, never believe what you find on the internet, not even my videos, this technically should have made this super faster. Okay, so we're getting all of the runes back, and like all of the other things, right click with an empty end to start the next one. Put this on, and let just that continue. So while this is continuing, we're going to grab this, and we're going to look at the flowers that we want to make. Oh yeah, for the flowers, if you guys remember correctly, to make flowers, we're going to need uh, seeds. And I have a very easy solution for seeds. A stack of this and go back up and we now have a stack of seeds so yeah not a problem at all so let's come back here I just need to make sure that I'm juggling the creation of the two properly because I need to always be making everything kind of at the same time so now 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 I can start working on the seeds well the flowers so if I go back to my book uh, right here, I have too much stuff. If I go back to my book, the next flower that we need, I, I want to make them in a different order. The first one I want is the Jaded Amaranthus, okay? So, does it say, oh, it does give a description. Look at this. Oh my god, that's all. I'm, I'm just going to give you the, 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 the side notes. So, the Jaded Amaranthus is made with a rune. Rune of Spring, and I'm making Summer Rune, so yeah, that's going to have to wait a little bit. What's going on here? Oh, it was missing one rune, so I didn't grab it properly, unfortunately. Okay, so let's just, let's prepare for the Rune of Spring. So for the Rune of Spring, I'm going to need uh, saplings wheat and rune of fire and water so rune of fire and water spring uh saplings i mean we're going to need 12 saplings and we're going to need uh, that's four yeah and we're going to need four wheat perfect let's go back up and let's go back over there grab every single one this time Right click with an empty end and get that started. Perfect. Let's split our time between the living rock and this. And this is something that I'll be able to automate pretty soon. Well, I don't know if I can fully automate it yet, but I can do a partial automation that I'm kind of like, I want to make soon. So this should be done. Yes, grab all of those. And now we can start making the next one. So the next one is going to be fire air, wheat, one, two, three sapling, and a block. And yeah, we don't need this in our end anymore because the next one we're just going to be able to uh, right click with an empty end. And this is, I'm really not happy about the Elven Manor spreader. 
Okay, so by the way, you can right click, shift right click to remove an augment. And now it's working. It, was that only the issue? Because if it's the issue, I understand it, but it kind of removes the principle. Oh, look at how fast this is. Ooh, that's why you probably you need the tinkerer. I had not thought of that. Give me a moment. Okay, so if I come right here and I grab a tinkerer, like a so, and I go back here, yep, and I put this right here, and I put the augment right there. Now I need a redstone signal, so I'm going to need a lever. Uh, lever, 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 lever. Wireless terminal, and I'm going to need a shtick right here, and I'm going to need a cobblestone, cobblestone, cobblestone. <laughs> 20,000, I need to do something about my cobblestone, this is ridiculous. Okay, so like this, this is going to give me a lever. Okay, so let me continue. So here's how I see this working right now. Uh, this is like not charging because now the spark is not on it, but it's giving permission to the Elven Mana Spreader to work, which makes this, oh God, this is so fast. This is like really good. And already the next one's done. And oh, we're already at the next one. So let's go back here and let's try this. So now if I put this and I turn this on, it puts it on the spark and it's recharging. And I do this. Oh, oh, okay, so it would be better to use a button. So one redstone signal pushes on and one redstone signal removes it. Okay, so that's not bad. So technically what we need now is to read a redstone signal from this mana pool and use it to provide a signal here if the mana pool is too full or too empty. Uh, that being said, let's start making the Rune of Autumn. The Rune of Autumn is air fire air fire <clears throat> and then it's spider eyes Ooh. terminal do i have a spider eye spider oh i only have three okay i'm gonna craft some more not a big deal not a big worry gonna grab the mana steel shears and just give me leaves Okay, so that worked. Grab this and put this here. So I need some spider eyes. So let's go downstairs and I'm pretty sure I have spider essence somewhere. Go back up, floor one. And what can I make with spider essence? I can make a string or eyes. You know what? I'm gonna make eyes because I don't wanna have this problem. I used all of it. Eh, it's not the end of the world. No one's worried about this. So let's just go back. Now we can do this. So it's going to be two rubber leaves, one birch leaf, one spider eye leaf. What? Me? Ah, uh, maybe the rubber leaves are not recognized. Yeah, spruce leaf, spruce, air and fire. Yeah, I know there's something it doesn't like. Well, I'm not going to be using that one now. So one, two, three. Okay, so the rubber leaves are a no-go. Don't know why. Don't really care. Let's just go like this. And come on. You're not going as fast as you were before. Doesn't matter. Let's just continue. Going to break this, this, this and continue my crafting of living rock. Wait, push that back in. Let's go with a right click. This is a bit annoying. You have to be careful really to grab everything. Okay, let's start looking at the flowers that we want to make today. So the first one is the 
no, sorry, the Jaded Amaranth. So the Jaded Amaranth is made with spring, green, lime, purple, and redstone root. Green, lime, and purple, like so. Grab all of this, empty end, go, go, perfect. So, now we should have everything to make this. There's already water in it, so I'm going to go lime, purple, green, one rune of spring. And we're going to lose that rune of spring. That's why we made a bit more rune of springs. This, and then a seed. And voila, we have our jaded emeritus right here. Grab all of this, restart the next craft. I said grab all of this, and now I need two of these leaves. So it works with different leaves as long as you're not using the rubber leaves. Perfect. So the jaded emeritus, I'm also going to need another mana pool, like so. And I'm going to need a full mana tablet to fill that pool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that mana pool right here. This in it and yeah, it's emptying. Perfect. Okay, that was bizarre for a moment. And I'm going to use the Jaded Emeritus and I'm going to put it here and look at the reach of this. And what this is going to be doing is it's going to be using the mana from this pool and it's going to start generating flowers. See? Oh, I got one mystical gray flower right here, one mystical purple flower right here. And this is going to just passively start generating flowers for me. And I don't know how much mana it's using, but it shouldn't be using all that much. <laughs> and this is already refilling because of my uh, spark. <laughs> so let's show that in here. So this is my recessive spark here that's slowly working back mana into the pool. Okay, so that's done, that's done, that's done. I'm just going to put the flowers in here. I should not have picked them up for now, but this is slowly making more flowers for me. So I'm gonna go back here, get rid of the saplings and the leaves. The leaf I'm going to go put back here to transform for transform into shrinks. Yeah, like so. Perfect. And we can continue. So that's one of the flower that we're already using. I want to make a solenolia. So that's the next one I want to make. The solenolia is made with two brown, red, blue, and redstone root. Two brown, red, blue. Blue, two brown, one red. So let's just go put some water in here. Blue, brown, brown, red, and a redstone root. And voila. So the reason I want to put that is if I grab this and I put this flower here now, do you see this stupid block of coal? Well, if I go here and I turn on this, whoa, I was sold a lie, or I just don't know how it works. This is supposed to prevent me from grabbing flowers. Uh, from gra It's supposed to prevent my magnet from working. Disable magnet rings. Ah, oh, it only works on magnet rings. Oh, well, so I would need to switch to a magnet ring instead. Well, it's not as useful as I thought it would be, but yeah, whatever, I guess. It's not like I'm using it so much, but it would have made things just a tiny bit easier. Let's push that in here. Mystical, great, mystical, light, great. Okay, I was wondering why they were not stacking. So let's just make the other three so we can finish this quest. The Renon Carpus is a flower that uh, place any placeable items nearby on block that matches the block to block below them. Okay, so places any placeable item nearby on blocks that match the block to below them. So run and come what run run on carpus. Wow, orange, orange, yellow, and a rune of earth. And this rune of earth we're going to use. So. Uh, what was it again? Orange, orange, yellow? Yeah. Orange, orange, yellow. Uh, nope. <laughs> Not mystical, light blue. Yellow. 
and let's grab a bucket of water and let's just make that next flower like so so orange orange yellow redstone root and a rune of earth and voila so what i thought i could do with this is what's the range of this like so so let me try something let's say i remove these and i go Oh, I can't go too lower. Darn it. Oh, yes, I can. Let me just rearrange some stuff. That should take a second. Oh, my God. That's a teeny bit frustrating. Just give me a second. I need now to fix what I've broken. So do this. Put this back in here. Yeah and reconnect the power like this and now grab a stone and put a stone right here i don't know if it's the first level or the second level if i put a stone right there if i drop a stone on the ground where did i place it hey you didn't place it anywhere So this is placing the block where? <laughs> I'm gonna go see underground. Is it placing it below? So what my understanding of this was that, oh yes, look! <laughs> and this one got transformed. Uh, I don't understand. My understanding of this was that it was going to place it above any stone block that we placed. So it sees a stone block here, it would place it above here. So I'm gonna do a little bit more research on that because obviously that's another fail on my part, but that was my understanding. I thought that's how you would uh, be automating these pure daisy, that you would put that here and it would just, this would just put down the blocks that it require, but obviously I need a bit more research. Like I've never really played with these flowers. Defamil. So the daffodil is a very simple flower that basically uses mana to push objects around. So it's kind of a fan, but it doesn't work on mobs. So white, white, brown, yellow, and rune of air. White, white, brown, yellow. Nope, yellow. Perfect. So let's put that, let's get rid of this flower and let's just make this other flower. So white white brown yellow redstone and a rune of air because of course it's pushing things with air so that totally makes sense let's put the water for the next one and the next flower which i think is the last one for the quest is clayconia so i don't have any intention of using the daffo mill right now i have no plan for it the next one is the clayconia and the clayconia is very simple it transforms sand into a block of clay but as you can see, because of my sludge boiler, I have so much clay, I really don't need that one. I'm just making it for the quest. So light gray, light gray, gray, and cyan. So light gray, light gray, gray, and cyan. Okay, so light gray, light gray, gray, cyan. What else? I don't remember what the other one is. Probably a rune of earth. Yeah, rune of earth, which I don't have on me because I've used the other one. So this, and now, and voila, we have a claconia. Like I said, no intention of using it. So let's show it in here for now. That should be one flower quest done, which now unlocks the next. Oh, it doesn't unlock all of them. They make a round robin. That's going to be annoying. So growing flowers with flowers. These flowers help with crop. The one, the only, the Agricarnation. So for the Agricarnation, we need a Rune of Spring, two lime, one green, one red, and a redstone. So two lime, one green, one red. So two lime, one red, one green, one redstone, and one Rune of, uh, let me just check the quest again. Um, one Rune of Spring which is why we started making these extra runes because we knew we were going to need them for the flower wait 
I missed something. When it's not letting you throw the seed, it means, means you missed something. So two lime, one green, one yellow. Oh, one yellow, not one red. And I crashed again. And we're back, so let's grab a yellow instead of red. I, I really, like, I'm a bit worried right now. I'm hoping this is not going to happen too often because it's really disturbing when you have to restart everything and restart recording. And it also means a lot more uh, editing because you need to put all of these spliced video together. So that's going to be a second quest. Perfect. We're going to get rid of those. An Ardy Carnation Petite, which is a smaller <laughs> version of the same flower. Okay. Um, next step. Okay. So this is basically the flowers that i wanted to get to these and then not sure where the other one that i want i are but we need to make these so belly thorn that's something i want because once you fight the gaia the gaia is going to uh start spawning mob at some point and and by spawning mob i mean a lot of mobs and belly thorn they deal damage to mobs so this is a really nice flower that you want to have so belly thorn are made with Three red, two cyan, and a redstone root. Um, I'm going to pick up all of these flower right now. Just because I need a little bit of space. Oh wow, this is generating faster than I'm actually picking up the flower, I feel and put some in here. I could totally transform these into petals immediately, technically. What I want to do is I need more grass. Uh, nope, that's not what I need. So I need my sigil of the green grove. Perfect, so I can do that and pick all of these. Yeah, so the Jaded Emerantus is really a great way to uh, make these extra flowers that we need. So, you know what? I said that the flower pouch was not super useful, but that was basically before I knew about the Jaded Emerantus. Like, so I knew about the existence of the Jaded Emerantus, but since it's something that I never used, it just never registered how great it was. So let's just show all of this in here. And you, you're seeing me push flowers in it right now, but that's only because uh, I'm not breaking them because I think it's going to, if I had done that before I started breaking them, I thought, I think it would have all grabbed them. We're gonna test that in one moment. So this and this and perfect. And now I'm going to Grab my wireless terminal and show these extra things in there. Perfect. And now we're going to try it again. So now if I come here and I pick this flower and this flower. Like this. Nothing in my inventory. Everything in the flower pouch. Yep. Yeah, so that's really, really useful. So let me come back here. And I'm going to use this one. Nope, I need the catalyst. I need this one. Nope. Huh. How do I make redstone roots again? I'm just confused right now. Just give, oh, in a much simpler way with good old crafting. So I'm going to need some redstone right here. Redstone. So let me grab 12. And voila, more redstone root. And you don't need to have this on your bar. You just need to have it in your inventory. So now, as we were saying, we were going to craft the uh, Bella Thorn, but <clears throat> we were going to craft eight of them. So we need eight, 16, 24, and 16 cyan. 24 red. Ugh. And 16 cyan. Ugh. Let's look at my flower pouch. Have I been lucky? Yep, just one red and just one cyan. So, 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 let's never forget there's always the good old uh, bone meal trick. So let's just go back here and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, 
No, I already switched color. Not a problem. Now let's just grow all of these. I'm going to have to do a second pass of red, I believe, which is not a problem. And shears, and by the way, my shears are not taking damage because the, uh, they, they repair themselves with mana. And since I have a mana tablet here, I'm good and I'm getting repairs this way. So I'm good on the cyan, but for the red, I'm going to go a bit heavier and just make another big batch of red. Like this. <sighs> oh, I don't even know why I walked back here. I could just have grabbed this from afar. I just, sometimes I derp. I'm a derp. You guys all know this. If you've watched more than one of my videos, you've known that I have a tendency to derp. Let me grab all of this. And while I'm here, and since I have the flower bag, let me grab all of these generated flower. <laughs> this is really great. Honestly, if I had known, like if I had done a bit more Botania research in the beginning and I had learned a bit more about it, I would not have stressed about the flower. I would have gotten everything to get the jaded as fast as possible. And after you got the jaded Emerantus, let's be honest, nothing else matters. So let's go water, one, uh, two, one, two, three, one. And this is one Bellathorn. And now we're going to do this seven more times. Water, empty end, throw the seed. Water, empty end, throw the seed. And I should be smart. So water, empty end, throw the seed. Water, empty end, throw the seed. This is, once you know about this trick, this is so great. And once you know about the shoot and dropping the back bucket, that's when you also unlock the uh, mysteries of auto crafting flowers. So I'm going to throw these flowers where are they the bellatorn in here so that's one of the thorn of the flowers next flower i want to finish these flower and unfortunately we're going to have to leave the episode because it's going to already be a long one and in my time lapse i'm going to set up my crafting area and then i'm going to go to the next episode which is going to be a thumbcraft episode which I've also discovered why I couldn't make the goggles. And I'm going to talk about that in the next episode. So let's go back here. Next flower is the Dread Thorn. So the Dread Thorn is, uh, it's a flower that I don't, let me check my notes. I put all notes on that somewhere and it's going to be in the description. So the Dread Thorns, uh, they hurt adult animals. So not super useful for me basically for mob farming, uh, not mob farming, animal farming. So three black, two cyan, a redstone root, three black, one cyan, and a redstone root. So let's grab water, one, two, three, one redstone root. What, 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 what did I screw up again? These recipes are much harder what two. I don't know what's my what's happening with my brain farts today. So that's a perfect. That's done. Now let's show it in here with the other flowers that we don't need. The next one is the Iacidus. The Iacidus is a flower, and I'm looking at my notes right now. Oh, it poison mobs and it basically basically make them one hit. Eh kind of useful ish but not so sure so two purple two magenta and a green two purple a magenta and a green so let's go water water two purple one magenta and a green and then we needed two runes what are the two runes that we need the two runes are autumn and water so autumn and water so this is going to be lost and what else what else did i screw up 
Oh, a redstone root. And a redstone root. Really? What did I really screw up? So I did screw up. I just don't know what. Two purple, two magenta. I'm missing a magenta. Yes, perfect. And now we got this one. Okay, so again, I said this one is to poison mobs. Not super useful for us. Uh, if we wanted to have like a mob farm where they were one hit, all the mob could be one hit, might be useful. Right now, I don't see the use, and we'll just have it for later. This one, the Giulia. This one is amazing. So this one, two pink, a purple, and a light gray. Two pink, a purple, nope, a purple, and a light gray. You know what? Let me duplicate the pinks. Uh, like this and like this although I just saw there's a lot of purple uh, of pink that seems to crop up here so might not be needing this great perfect so let me do the pink nope let me do the pink and we're going to keep two. So one, two and throw the rest in there. Perfect. Let's continue. So this, this and the two pink. Then what else? Uh, pink, pink, pink. Water and air. Water and air. Okay, so I need those. Water. I'm going to have to make more of these pretty soon. Water and air and go. Perfect. Okay, so this flower. So this flower is so interesting that I'm going to make a special flower. So I'm finally going to make floating flowers. So for floating flowers, I'm going to need one flower, which, uh, which is the one that I have the most? The yellow. So let me grab a yellow flower and then I'm going to grab two glowstone. Glowstone like this. One, two. Let me grab one dirt like this. And I'm going to need a, okay, let's do it step by step. So if you take a mystical, any mystical flower and you add two glowstone, they become a glimmering flower. When you have a glimmering flower, you can use a dirt, a glimmering flower and a pasture seed to make a floating water. Pasture seed, yeah, okay, that's how we get them. So I'm going to have to do this and this and I'm definitely going to need another uh, another area to um, another grass area. Perfect. Let's grab all of these, and we're going to come back right here, and we're going to make these into pasture seeds. Yeah. So all ten into pasture seed because we're going to need those later. Come back here. Let's get rid of this, this, and nope. Okay, so now if I come to this crafting table and I use my glimmering with a pasture seed and with a dirt, I make a floating flower. And if I take any floating flower and any other flower, like my Giulia, I make a floating Giulia. The beauty of floating Giulia, you can put them like there anywhere not on dirt not on anything and if i was to put down water it wouldn't break it and if i was going to so here you see these flowers uh, yeah let's make let's do one last thing what's the horn of the wild horn horn so right here Horn of the Wild. So a Horn of the Wild is made with five living wood and a pasture seed. So let me grab five living wood. One, two, three, four, five, and a pasture seed. Like so, which makes a Horn of the Wild. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this flower. And I'm going to grab one, any one flower from my pouch. Perfect. Uh, anyone, I'm going to grab the yellow right here. 
And now I'm going to grab, I was going to say I'm going to grab two dirt, but I have a simpler solution. I'm just going to grab my rod. So if I come back here, okay, and if I put down two dirt block like this, and I put this flower here and this here, if I go like this and I sound my own of the wild, it collected this flower, but not that one. And what is that flower and why is it important? Well, look at this. Okay, whew. this flower range of effect pushes mob around me. So let's say that we go into a mob spawner. I could technically take this. Well, you know what? Let's say, oh, whew. let's say I wanna go in my mob spawner right here. I could put this down and can I show it? Spawn some more, please. Spawn some more, please. And then I put this. Oh no, they're not being pushed because they're being attracted by, okay, sorry. So let me show you somewhere else. So if I come here and I attract this little zombie, come here little zombie. Oh, oh, he can't get up. If I put this flower right here, do you see him backing up? He's being slowly pushed away by this flower. So, oh, you. <sighs> okay, that was scary. I thought he had just stolen, he just, well, I thought, I didn't think he stole my flower, but I killed him and he gave it right back. But so basically, when I'm going to be fighting the Gaia Spirit, like I said, the Gaia Spirit is going to be spawning mob. By putting one of these floating Julia, it's going to push the mob away from me. So they're not going to be able to come to me and attack me. So that's why it's one of the flowers that we want. So basically, one of the flower is going, the, the Bellathorn are going to hurt the mob. And the this is going to push them away from me. So I'm going to be able to put the Bellathorn at the end of the range of this and just stay here while I'm attacking the Gaia spirit and all of the mobs are going to be pushed away. So let's just try and finish this now because the rest I really don't care about. So the Medu Moni is, it gives a powerful slowness effect on the mob. Okay, not super useful for me right now. Tangle Berries will trap mobs or animal in a circle ward. So I could have a mob, uh, not a mob farm, like I could have some animals and instead of putting fences, which are really ugly, and just put this flower, the Medumoni, in the middle of the place. Oh, it didn't work because it didn't have mana. I feel so dumb right now. This flower needs mana, so it needs to be next to a mana pool. To You do see the particle effect trying to feed it now. So I'm not going to leave it on because I don't want to waste my mana, but that's why it wasn't working back there. Anyway, next flower is Tangleberry, which keeps mobs together. The next one is kind of nice. The uh, tiger's eye makes sure that creepers don't explode. And the vinculotus, the vinculotus basically is a flower that stops Enderman from uh, teleporting. So let's just make the next one. Medumone is made from two brown, two gray, earth, and redstone root. So two brown, two gray. So the brown, I'm going to go and duplicate just because I feel I'm a bit low. Five and this. Perfect. And then the shears. And like this. Perfect. So two brown, two gray. So I can just put that back. Two brown, two gray. A rune of earth. Yeah, we're really now low now. So... Two gray, two brown, rune of earth, redstone, root, and my seed right here. So that's the Medumone that I can put away now. Next one is, I'm just going to finish them quickly now. Tangleberries, Tangleberries is going to be two cyan, a gray and a light gray, a rune of air and earth. Oh. Rune of Air and Earth. I might not even be able to finish just because of that. I didn't think about these extra runes. So this and this. 
What are the petals again? Two cyan, gray, and light gray. Two cyan, gray, and light gray. Perfect. Voila, that's the next flower right here. Keep grabbing you. I thought you wouldn't be a problem because I thought I had solved you, but obviously I didn't solve you. Tiger's Eye is going to need a Rune of Autumn, yellow, brown, orange, lime. Yellow, brown, orange, lime. Yellow, brown, orange, lime. Wow, that's a lot of different old flower. So, and a uh, Rune of Autumn or Spring. Let me just check. Uh... Autumn. Okay, so this one's going to be good. And we're only going to have one left. Perfect. Hopefully we can make the last one. And the last one for this quest is going to be the Vintoculus, which is going to be... No! Okay, so we're going to stop here. Like, this is too much. So I'm going to go into time lapse. In the time lapse, I'm obviously going to be making... Oh, I never made the winter runes. <laughs> I'm going to be making four winter runes which are, I'm just going to show you quickly, Rune of Winter. Rune of Winter are made with uh, a cake, two snow, and a wool. So the cake is super easy. It's sugar, wheat, egg, and milk bucket. So for people who think that this is hard, let me just show you right now. I'm gonna need two cakes. I'm gonna need six bucket of milk. So Six times four is 24 last time I checked. Uh, 24, I'm gonna need one, two, three, four, five, six of those. I'm gonna need one, two, three, four of those. I'm going to need some eggs. Eggs are chicken essence and I'm gonna need 16. 16, perfect. Let's go back here. Chicken essence into, oh, need two more. So, oh. Need two more. One, two. I definitely didn't remember that the uh, wing, uh, the, the wings, the feather was the less expensive recipe. Okay, so now if I come in here and I put a bucket here and I go cow essence like this, I'm going to get six bucket of milk like so. Perfect. Then I'm going to transform these into four sugar. I'm going to throw in there, throw in there. Throw in there, and then I can go to Rune of Winter and Cake. And I made two cakes, which is stupid because I want to make four, so I need two more cake, but I'll do that in my time lapse. I just wanted to show you. So in my time lapse, I'm going to be making some runes, and I'm going to, so that I can continue with the flower in the next Botania episode, and I'm going to start setting up the Gaia, alt, uh, the Gaia uh, thing about Bobby, the Gaia... Uh, fight area because i'm gonna need like a fighting area for this i want to make this very simple and the reason this is not working super well is that for whatever reason which i still don't understand uh these need to you know what one of the so okay sorry 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 starting again one of the thing i'm gonna do in my time lapse is manage my mana once and for all i think i'm just getting fed up of all of this I'm going to make a, uh, an area to generate mana. Like I'm going to move this mana generation setup because I don't like where it is. What I'm basically going to do is I'm going to put it underground. And I'm going to point a mana spreader to this and I'm going to have four all around. And these four are all going to have a spark that are recessive, which means that they want to push the mana somewhere else. And I'm going to have a mana pool here for this. And I'm going to have a mana pool here for my reload. And I'm going to have uh, another mana pool probably here with a spreader to go to each side. And I'm going to have another mana spreader because, okay, one of the things that's not shown here is b botanical brewery. And that's going to be my one last thing. I'm going to craft a botanical brewery. So botanical brewery is okay it's a rune of mana so it's, it's easy so i'm going to need a brewing stand so let's go back here and craft a brewing stand brewing stand like this perfect then we're going to need a rune of mana which i'm 
pretty sure I made, oh, I made, but I need to make another one because it got you. So I'm going to need five and one mana pearl. Perfect. So one, two, three, four, five, and a mana pearl and a this, and then I'm going to need my wand. Again, this should be super fast because the alpha elven mana spreader should be helping. The spark is not on. I there is something really wonky with the Elven Mana Spreader, which is making me absolutely unhappy right now. Oh, now it's pushing. There's something really weird here that I don't understand properly. So like this, like this, and a brewing stand, and what was the last one? A block of... <laughs> Yeah, of course. So a block of mana steel like this, and now I can finish the crafting. Perfect. So the botanical brewery, you put down like this, and basically it lets you craft uh, potions. Okay. So if I look at potions, uh, if I look at what can I look at? Uh, regeneration, right here. So flask of restoration or regeneration to flask of revitalization. So first of all, you need um, some flask, some half glass flask. So if I search for flask, these empty flasks are made from three half glass. So three half glass, so mana glass, half glass, one, two, three. So one, two, three, so that makes three. Okay, so you put one on top like this right here. And for the revitalization, this one, oh, we need glowstone, ghast, and nether wart. Glowstone, oh, not you. Glowstone, ghast, and nether wart. So one ghast, one glowstone, and one nether wart. Nether wart. Uh, that's my last one, but we know how to make those. So it's not complicated. So you right click, right click, right click, and then. Hmm. Can I redirect this one right here? Yes. Oh no! It gets intercepted. Okay, so what we're going to do is break you, grab you all back, and we're going to put you right here. And we're going to start again. So you, 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 and what was the third thing? The nether wart. <gasps> oh, I thought it consumed it. Okay, and the nether wart right here. And now we're going to go mana spreader to this and elven mana spreader to this. And look at this. It's now making the potion. So these brew are potions because they're made so it's the same recipe and you can make it in a small vial which is made from mana glass or in a flask which is made of uh, elven glass half glass the difference is one is four sip this one is six sip okay so once we're going to fight mob and look at all of these potion there's a <coughs> lot of nice potion and voila so you get this potion and if you look at me right now, I'm going to chug one. And now I have regeneration two for 22 seconds. And you can see my elf. Oh, I was showing my food. But that's what we're going to need for the fight. So that's something I wanted to craft to show you because I'm going to start making a potion. But the reason I was showing you is that I'm going to want a pool of mana to feed these, a pool of mana to feed the runic altar and a pool of mana to feed the recessive and a pool of mana for the brewery. Like I'm just gonna set myself up so that I have full mana pool wherever I need them, whenever I need them. And I'm probably going to make another mana pool that's going to be used just to refill my, my mana tablet. So that whenever it's full, I push two mana tablets in. And so this is going to continuously be emptying and I'm gonna need a mana pool just for the alchemical catalyst like I'm gonna set myself up so I have to stop playing around with all this stuff. So I'm gonna just do a little bit of cleanup on my Batania setup so that we have a easier time of dealing with all of this in the future. So guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.
Bye now.